A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but the salt loses its taste. What can it be seasoned? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others, so that they may see your good deeds glorifying your Heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord.
in that world where we can play small. And maybe it's like we haven't forgiven someone. We're playing small. We're just going to, you know, uh, hoist that over them or impose that upon them that we haven't forgiven them. Or maybe we're just playing small because we aren't seeking His Word or getting involved in the life of the community. Whatever that might be, playing small. Well, i got news for you. Jesus has needs. Jesus has needs. Big ones. And He has needs that we wouldn't be small. Would we lend Him our bodies and our time and our hearts and our minds, all that He's given us? Jesus has needs. Recently I was on a plane flight and sitting there, Tommy and Olga came on the flight. And Tommy and Olga... <coughs> Uh, they had just been married. And I helped prepare them for marriage. They didn't get married in the Catholic Church, but I helped them prepare for marriage. And so uh, it was great. And they were going on honeymoon. And they're at the back of the plane. So I said, you know, I mean, the Spirit's saying, you, you need to pray with them. Just bless them. So I wait. I got out of the plane before them. And I had to wait about 10 minutes, and they finally popped out. So we're talking, and we're all excited to see each other. Even before I got to Tommy and Olga, they asked him that question. Tommy said, can you pray with us? Gate number 17, right in the middle of the airport. I thought, what an image. That's the exact, exact opposite of small. That's big. That's Jesus big. That's like infinite big. And I fear, I fear there's so many of us, including myself, that will get caught up in the, this, that will like, okay, we get this great idea, and then we run out here, and then we get into some problems, or we get some unhappiness, or we get out here, and we forgot that we left Jesus behind. And we say, oh, now Jesus, come in. And come in to be a part of this. Need your light, need your wisdom, need your strength. Don't we do that when we don't pray? We just say, I'm going to go do this, and then we're going to ask Jesus to bless it. And say, instead of saying, we're going to pray, ask Jesus to bless it, and then we're going to go do this. Two different worlds. It's the world of small versus the world of the infinite. So I think that's a great image for a newly married couple on their way to their honeymoon. Can you pray over us? We don't care if it's in the middle of the airport. We aren't ashamed. We're not going to play small. We're going to ask the infinite blessing of God and that's going to be our marriage. I prepare tons of people for marriage. I always tell them it's not your marriage. It's Jesus' marriage that he blesses you with. How should that go? And to pray and to invite God into that. But a lot of times we're leading the light, right? How, how silly is that? To say that we're going to show the light, what the light is all about. I have a question for you. I've been here almost nine years. You don't have to answer it, but it's a question to think about. Have I interrupted your routine? Have I interrupted your life? I hope so. Because if I haven't interrupted your life, then I am not worth the three dollars an hour I'm making. <laughs> We have our routines, right? We get up, get the coffee, the paper, whatever, the dog, feed the dog, check out the stocks, check out the comics, whatever. I don't know. I don't know what your routine is, but we have routine. And we can just become routine. We just become routine. And in that way, just kind of effectively block out the light of the world, you know. So maybe think about that. I hope I've messed you up. <laughs> I hope I've messed your routine up. Say, so, you know what? It's not about you and it's not about your routine. It's about his routine. It's about his way. It's about what he has for us. It's about his life directing us, giving the grace, telling us what to do, when to do it, who to do it for. That we would be blessed by that light and be sent out in that light. Instead of going ahead with the light and saying, oh, by the way, Jesus, come along for the right. So to think about that. What what has changed in my routine? What has changed in my faith practice? And to think about, just to think about for the light that wants to be revealed to us, the infinite light. I mean, the source of all light. We've got a little light going on here. I mean, we've, we've got it, uh, you know, through electricity, but just the light as we talk about God's Word. And to think about there's a source there. What's the source? And how amazing 
in an awe inspiring that light is that source to come into that light. Say you were doing, you had a assignment to write a biography on someone. This person is still living, but you're going to write a biography on them. What would, I mean, what would be the best thing to do? To go to other people and ask them about that person? Or to go to the one you're doing the biography on? Of course, to go to the one you're doing the biography on. It's the same thing with the light of the world. To go to the light of the world and say, enlighten me. Tell me what you're all about. Tell me your routine. I'm tired of my routine. It's dead. It's not leading anywhere. I want to know your routine. I want to know your life and what it's all about. Jesus has never intended us to live a small life. The light of the world is in you. The infinite light refracting in infinite ways all the time. This is what we're called to. Let your light shine to see that. How have you been small? Pray about that. Get rid of that. It might be throwing your TV out the window. Could be. If that's how he wants to break your routine, let him break it. How much light do we want? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrieking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are meant to shine as children do. Think about that. Just on the playground, just out. Just shine. No embarrassment. No holding back. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. There's no excuses. There's no excuses for playing small. There's no excuses for not letting God destroy your routine and give you a routine that is life upon life. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. 